Vanderbilt spent the worst SEC school for a while, but to my surprise, they used to be good at football as they won six championships from 1906 to 1922. That means today my goal is to get them their first in 100 years, but the SEC just added Texas and Oklahoma, and I have a feeling that this rebuild's gonna take a while. When you look at their roster, it's not very good, but New Mexico State transfer Diego Pavia should help us out, and it's also key that we do a good job in recruiting because we don't even have a B rating at any position on this board, and you can't tell from the players that we're gonna be going after, but we are using Fangs for recruiting to get some higher overalls in here and the best players in the country don't even want to come to our school. This is going to be a challenge especially because I'm only a level one head coach and unfortunately it's going to be a while before I'm able to scout players fully. In our first year we're starting as a 77 overall so I'm not shocked that we're not even a top 100 team and our schedule doesn't start off that difficult but as the year goes on it gets much more difficult ending off at our rivals Tennessee. I'd absolutely love if we could take them down because that would knock off one of today's six challenges in this rebuild and if I fail any of those I'll be giving away a jersey to a random commenter. Now it's kind of scary scrolling through the overalls of the other colleges in our division because we are so far behind them. And I should also mention that I can only play three regular season games a year. So we're going to have to be really smart about the matchups that we play. And this is what our recruiting board is looking like so far, where I'd love to go more in depth on these prospects, but I don't even know what their true overalls are going to be. Due to that, we're just going to advance the week and we should take down Georgia State, but they beat us in overtime. So that should give you a pretty good idea of how difficult this is going to be. And everybody's coming for a visit against Mississippi State. Going into it, it, we're 13 overalls worse than them, so we might not win, but we could complete these objectives, and I just want a chance at landing some recruits. The climb up with Vanderbilt is going to be very difficult, and we do find ourselves on a third and 19 here where I'm going to hope to pick it up, but we just couldn't get it out in time. I'll take the 39-yard field goal because that puts us within four, but nothing's gone very well for us since then, and our defense needs to come up big time here on the goal line, but we cannot. I mean, the refs are trying to help us out because we're at home, but this was obviously a touchdown catch, and I wasn't sure what I'd think about Diego Pavia, but until this play, he has not been that solid. And even when he hits his target, it's not caught. In the end, we'd lose this one by a ton, and it was not a good visit week. So I have no idea how many commits we're actually going to land, but the fact that we passed for over 250 yards might help. And there is absolutely zero yellow names on this list, so we didn't get a single prospect. At least we're close to getting these two corners, but I think I'm going to get fired a ton throughout this rebuild. So that's going to be annoying because I'm not hitting six target wins. And that means every season our coach skill tree is going to reset back to level one. I'm just starting to be able to get to the point where I can find out some of these players true overalls and that gives me a reason to advance every week because I'm pretty sure we're not going to win a single game this season. At least we're going to add to our future defense with these three players coming to Vanderbilt and I'm about to find out how good all of them actually are where it looks like their overalls have stayed the same. I'm also pretty excited to see if we could land this four-star linebacker and I even found this guard who ended up being a plus eight gym. Now if it's possible I am going to try and search for more talent but Fang's recruiting mod makes it very hard for low lock cheese to work, so it's going to be a battle to bring any of these guys in if they turn out to be any good. Let's just say there's a reason that these four stars are struggling to be recruited, and I think it's going to be a while before we even have a chance of signing an 88 plus recruit. Even against Memphis, I don't feel like we have a chance, so I feel like Vanderbilt got done dirty with this 77 overall and there's another loss. We would pick up a couple more commits and I found some other prospects that I'm going to go after like this 77 overall end, but at the same time since we're performing so bad it looks like players are starting to lock us out, and this four star literally wanted to come here, but our stadium atmosphere is a deal breaker. Our attendance just isn't up to his standard, and I can't blame him. I don't think we're going to win a single home game all season. There's only one I feel like we're going to have a shot in, and trust me, I am going to play it. So that's coming up, and it's important to note that these four prospects have also committed to Vanderbilt, including this athlete, which will play running back. But unfortunately, it's becoming very clear that we aren't going to get this 77 overall defensive end, so we have to land this four-star linebacker. If we could just get our first win, I think it would help. But due to an injury, our best running back's not playing, and it's going to be a fight to take down Eastern Michigan. We have got to get a better home atmosphere though. So you best believe I am trying to lock in where we are going to miss this pass. Diego Pavia sold us there, but maybe he can help us pick it up with the exact same play. And that might not have worked, but we have gotten it down the field on our next drive as well. So this time we're simply going to keep it on the ground to punch it in. By the time we're approaching the end of the third quarter though, Eastern Michigan has it on a fourth and one and they're going to take the lead. So it would be nice if they don't pick up this two point conversion and they do. I cannot stress how important it is that we at least get one win this year and they boxed us up but at least we're on pace to respond back and it's third down there's only about three minutes left now and Pavia is going to have his slant so that is a big deal and on this third and 14 they are going to dump it off underneath but not get it we could come out and win on this next drive and that's exactly what we've done pounding the ball down the entire field if we get in here we're only going to leave about 20 seconds left on the clock and our quarterback just ran over that defender to take it in I gotta say at one point I was worried but I think we're going to be able to close it out and Vanderbilt is going to get a win 
win in this first season, but it's only because we had such an easy matchup against a max school. Maybe this will boost our home field advantage though, and it could have, but not enough because the 6'8 guard still won't come here. Now don't ask me how this is possible, but Georgia's ranked 20th at 2-4, and four, and I think there's some bias going on because how is this team still in the top 25? I mean, they're going to shred us either way. But right before I sim the game, I noticed that, and it just didn't add up to me at all. I think from here, I'm just going to sim to the end of the season as there's a few prospects we're going to hopefully get by then, and if we don't, it won't be the end of the world, but let's just advance to the Tennessee game. I'll honestly take only losing by 17, and even though we put up some close fights, we are sitting at 1-10. and 10. So unless we take down our rivals, we're going to be sitting at the bottom of our division, and that means we're still the worst team in the SEC, but we did land this kicker, and we're falling behind on Khalid, but we still have a chance to get him. Because one of our challenges is to beat Tennessee, I might as well play this one, and that is nuts that we have the worst offense and defense in the country. I highly doubt we're going to take down our rivals in year one, but so far, we've been trading touchdowns back and forth, and neither team's failed to score. Now, the rain did make us drop that one, but we still have a few opportunities to get some points, and that's going to be dropped too. It would really stink to go all the way down the field and then fail to get into the end zone, but they're going to knock it down. So this is the first time that someone's not scored a touchdown, and I'm not even going to try and pronounce Nico's last name, but I know we're going to have to face him for the next few seasons. It would be absolutely massive to get them off the field on this third and 10, and we are going to make the tackle. So I figured going into the half, we would be up by three, but they've attempted to go for it, and they are going to pick up the first. The weather is not helping us out. He just slipped right off of us, but it's short. And I don't think I've ever seen a ball get this close to fitting into the upright. All he needed was just a little bit more power and it would have gone in, but it doesn't seem to matter because here in the second half, Tennessee's had no issues with scoring and we're about to score again as well. They got ball first in the third quarter, so we've gone back to trading touchdowns. And I wanted to say defense has been non-existent, but they did get the sack. So I'm proud to say we're still able to reach the end zone. And after Tennessee got a field goal, it's all tied up at 31, which means we could have the final drive of the game, but we have to pick this up. And this is the best that Diego Pavia has played all season. He has four touchdowns. So I'm hoping we're able to get into field goal range and this is going to be short. I believe this is our best chance to beat Tennessee. So we have got to go for it in this situation where Skinner Jr. is going to get free. And I feel like we should just take it into the end zone, but that gives the volunteers a chance to respond back. And who would have thought we would have an opportunity to take down our rivals, knock off this challenge in year one. They have thrown it up and it looks like Squirrel White comes down with it. We just need to make sure he doesn't reach the end zone. But that hurts to see. We could have ended it right there and now the pressure is really on. Here on second and goal, they're just going to hand it off and Selden is not going to make it. And I have no idea why they're burning timeouts, but it helps us out just in case they do score where that sack might have just won us the game. On fourth and goal, now they're going to get in, but we still have 34 seconds to get some points ourselves. And I did not expect to spend this much time in season one, but this could be huge. I don't know what our field goal range is, but we have got to make the smart read here and I'm just going to force it over to our best receiver. He has been incredible for us and it looks like with this hitch route, we're going to be able to get it to him for another eight. So I'm feeling more confident than ever before. And this is another catch from him. Junior Cheryl could go down as the reason that Vanderbilt is going to beat our rivals, Tennessee, and Pavia is setting us up to kick the game-winning field goal where they can try their hardest to ice us. But this should be pretty straightforward to drill down the middle and that's what's gonna happen. I think this result alone could save me my job and we've knocked off our first of six challenges in this rebuild. I'm now excited to see how Diego does as a senior because even though he didn't have the best of seasons this year. I'm hoping that next year with a healthy Cedric Alexander, our offense can be better. And I wasn't kidding when I said Junior Cheryl was by far the best receiver on this team. Because of how he played in that last game, I'm not losing my job. But to be honest, I don't think I was ever on the hot seat and Vanderbilt just accepted that we weren't going to be good. In fact, after going 2-10, and 10, I've gotten a contract extension. And this is not normal. The expectations are always much higher. As for players leaving, we honestly might be worse after losing all these seniors. And on top of that, our freshman quarterback is transferring to Old Dominion. Meanwhile, nobody wants to come to our school, so I have to get them in recruiting, and I think we're just going to go all in on the four-star. I wanted to guarantee that we landed the linebacker, and for using Fang's recruiting mod where you can get 90-plus recruits, this is a terrible recruiting class, so I'm not surprised that it's ranked all the way down at 111. Harris was also an athlete that I thought we were going to put at running back, but it turns out he's a better wide receiver, and we definitely don't need two kickers, so I'm going to move one of these guys to punter. Now it's time for the most nerve-wracking part of the offseason, and although some of the progression isn't the best for a two-star school, I'm very happy to see some of this. We're definitely going to have to focus on recruiting a quarterback though, and I think in order to increase our odds of getting one, I'm going to cut this freshman that we just brought in. After doing some red shirting, I think we're going to be ready for season number two, and I'm honestly just going to have to hope that a lot of these players that are being red shirted aren't going to transfer out. If any of them do decide to leave though, we need to build up a good recruiting class, and I have a feeling this board's going to change a lot over the next couple of weeks, but there are some prospects that could be interesting. There's already eight of them that are interested in visiting versus number two Ole Miss, and because of where they're ranked, you're probably thinking I'm nuts for setting that up, but 
but they're an 88 overall and we're an 83. So even though our conference outlook isn't looking the best, I have a lot of faith in this roster. To open up the season though, we're playing at Mississippi State and they're much better. So I'm surprised that we only lost by three. And I don't know what happened with Charles Walls, but we have no chance at getting him. So it's a good thing Quez Grant is an actual possibility. He's a scrambler and I said I wouldn't recruit one in my next video. So if we're somehow able to land Dominic Qualls, I promise I'll pull out. And I think after taking a closer look, I have found the 13 prospects in this class that I'm going to have to target the hardest. It's all going to start when we host number two Ole Miss, so we're just advancing to that. And it's not going to help us that they're coming off of a loss, dropping them to number 12. But this would still be a big win because I'm on the hot seat. They literally just gave me a new contract two games ago. And it's pretty obvious that we're not going to land five-star scrambler Quez Grant. So I was hoping maybe we'd get Dominic Qualls and we're losing even more points on him. That's very concerning, even though we're going to bring in these 280 overall recruits. And I've got to search for some more talent before it's too late. I'm going to go through quarterback after quarterback until I find us a good one. And unfortunately, after scouting 53 star QBs, this is the best I got. I think it's time we distract ourselves versus Ole Miss. And we actually have a really good crowd for this game. So far, both of us have scored a touchdown and it looks like on our second drive, we're going to get close to another, which means defense might be non-existent, but it gives us a chance. I'd do anything to hold them on this third and five, but they're going to burn us deep and I have to make this tackle with Taylor if I don't want them to score a tutty. But that drive would still result in them getting one and then they got a field goal. This is going to be dropped and that stings because we could have really used this one, but it's all good. We're going to look at the corner route again and there we go. The one time we did hold them to a field goal, it was because we sent a blitz and it almost paid off again. But I have a feeling that they're probably in field goal range and that's short. That means if we end this first half the right way, we could be up by 11 points against the Rebels and look at this run from Alexander. It wasn't perfect, but it was the start of us moving it down the field on this drive and they stopped us. So that was a great defensive play. And there's just 11 seconds left in the half, but I really want to reach the end zone. So I'm thrilled to see Junior Cheryl hold on to the football and on fourth and inches, they're not getting it. Ever since then, we've been doing our best to just chew the clock. And I really had to lock in for this one because it could help us greatly in the future with recruiting and also with me keeping my job. We've dominated the game on the ground and it's going to pay off. But in order to seal it, we have to pick up this third and five. And I'm going to do that on the ground because of our senior quarterback, we're taking down Ole Miss. But we have a real problem because we haven't found his replacement. And I want to be happy about about landing all these commits, but none of them are close to an 88 plus. So I have no idea how we're going to sign one of those in the future. But on the bright side, my job security is going up and I have to make sure that we beat Georgia State. They're undefeated and favored to take us down, but I hope this is the season we beat them. And I'm shocked that we still have this much support from our crowd. Our defense is the reason we took down the Rebels and it's looking to do the same for us today as on third and nine, they're just going to try to go deep and we are all over that one. The only issue is we're struggling to get points in this one. So it's tied up at three to three and on fourth down, we don't get it. That is so annoying and now they're handing it off here but because of how well Gillespie was able to fill that hole we made them settle for three and to end this first half I'm hoping that we can get the first touchdown in this game as we're getting closer eventually it would become third and goal and I trust our offensive line to win this battle but they didn't so it's six to six and what a terrible first half at least it's not going to take much to beat the Panthers but things really opened up in the second half as everyone's just scored touchdown after touchdown so this third and fourth quarter has been much different than the first two and the Panthers are very close to tying it up on us where we have missed. It's a good thing that we get the last drive and I feel like we should be able to bomb them over the top. But of course we dropped the football and now we have to work it down the field a little bit smarter as that's going over to our best receiver. I'm not sure what our kicker's range is, but I feel like we have got to be getting close and I can't believe they just made that hit. But I know we cannot handle overtime as well. So we're just going to go for it. And that was the right move. I could not handle us continuing to score touchdown after touchdown against each other. So now we just need to seal it with this kick. And that's what we do. When it comes to me keeping my job, this should definitely help. And shout out to Diego for another good stat line. But one thing I am noticing is when it comes to recruiting, we're struggling to keep up with some of these other schools. So we need to get enough upgrades to be able to put points in the kitchen sink. And it should help that we're playing against an FCS school next because we're going to beat them by 21. It's so nice to have perfect job security again, but that's only because we've gotten off to a decent start in the SEC. And I know over this next five games late, things are going to get much more difficult. There's really not that much we can do about it besides just hope for the best. And I can still hop into one more this year, which is nice, but we beat Florida with a result like that. I can't even be upset that we got locked out from Clark Wilson. And there's a ton of SEC schools tied with two losses besides South Carolina, who we still play. The fact that we could still make a bowl game is incredible. And on the road at Georgia, we are going to lose by 25, but I can't be upset because we beat the Gators and we lost to recruit to Indiana. I have driven through that state many times and I can't believe a recruit would willingly choose to live there, but we're going to lose to Auburn. And that hurts because we are starting to fall off. I know we're not going to take down number four. South Carolina, so we might as well just get through this, but we did. And it has to be because Pavi is leading the country in passing yards. We are set to make a bowl game in season number two, and the commits are starting to flood in for us, but there's still these four battles we're going to have to finish 
cash out, including one for a quarterback. I think we have a better chance of beating Kentucky than Tennessee again, so we're traveling to Kroger Field to hopefully become bowl eligible. And my Wildcats are 1-7, and seven, so we should have no issues, but that's also because Diego's been on another level. We're definitely going to need it since Kentucky seems to be able to keep up with us. And let's end this first half with a lead where our corner route did get open. I'm honestly so proud of how our offense has done this season, and we've gotten two results in Sim that I would have never expected. Because of that, we might take a major step back next year, but I'm enjoying this while we can, and Pavia is going to hopefully make it to the end zone, but he couldn't, so we're simply just going to hand it off. And Kentucky's trying their hardest to give us a problem. Second and goal now, it looks like they are going to try to scramble. We can be all over Devston Wade. Come on. And we should have tackled him much sooner, but it's all good. We could get the stop, and we are going to. Here we go. Fourth and goal now. They go with the counter. We can tackle him. And both teams' defenses have come up with some very clutch stops. They boxed everything up, and this is why it's so nice to have a rushing quarterback like this. But in my last rebuild, I said we'd use a pocket passer in the next one, so he's going to be the last scrambler that I use. And it would definitely be nice to have a QB that could hit throws like that. We're just going to try to pin them inside the 10. But it didn't work, and our defense has to step up again. I think it's safe to say I don't really see that happening, and Barry and Brown takes it. So Kentucky has a lead, and there's a decent chance it's about to get worse, but we forced the fumble, and we have kicked so many game-winning field goals this year, so it's going to be no surprise if we're able to pull off yet another one. I will admit, I've run into a little bit of trouble, as it is now 3rd and 13, but we get it over to Quincy Skinner Jr. And on 4th and 2, I'm just going to look for the slant over the middle, and instead of taking it, I might as well run for it. I would much rather be safe than sorry with the game on the line, and with this kick, we are back up by 2. That's going to seal our bowl eligibility in season number 2, and it's all thanks to our senior quarterback, but we also had to get pretty lucky in sim, and there's another one. Now, I thought all was going well, but we've been locked out from both of these guards, so I'm only going to be able to unlock one of them. And then going into the offseason, this tight end decided he wanted nothing to do with us. I really can't complain, though. We went 7-5, and five, and it wouldn't have been possible without beating the Gators and then also the Gamecocks. We definitely deserve our spot in the Las Vegas Bowl, and Diego Pavia did throw a lot of interceptions, but he also led us to a 7-win season, so I can't be upset. And look at that stat line from Cedric Alexander. Between him and Junior Cheryl, both of them were fantastic, and I want to close out this season with a win. Now Vanderbilt has no choice but to keep me around, and my name better not pop up on the hot seat ever again. It wouldn't make any sense after what I did with an 83 overall team, and I just hope that Alexander stays for a senior year. I had no idea that our offense would turn out to be this good, especially because we're running a new playbook that I normally don't use, and with that pass, he keeps setting records. Anyway, I was skeptical about using the one-back playbook, but it did wonders for us in sim and in-game as well. On third and 20, we are going to hit Skinner Jr., who helps us get past midfield, and he somehow has escaped out of there. This is going to make it 35 to 10. We played SEC schools all year, so UNLV didn't stand a chance, and we were just 300 yards shy of passing for 4,000 yards, so we almost knocked off a second challenge in just year number two. Now, from the looks of it, you're going to see that we're losing a ton of starters, but there is something good, and that's that Junior Cheryl didn't declare for the NFL draft, so we have him for another season, and due to some lockouts, it made this offseason recruiting period super easy. I thought we'd get both of those guys, but we did lose the guard to Missouri, and overall-wise, this class is definitely better than the last one that we had, so it makes no sense for it to be ranked outside the top 100. It's fine, though, and our running back room's gotten a lot smaller, so we've got to move this athlete over there where he becomes a 74. Then, because we landed Jay Kirk, I'm going to make the bold move of making Brian Longwell a left end, and we really need player progression to go well, so I'll admit I'm pretty happy with what I see so far because we have 290 overalls, and I think senior Drew Dickey's going to start at quarterback so we can redshirt freshman Hayden Richardson. I'm just not comfortable using him with his throw accuracy yet, and it'll be interesting to see what having a pocket passer does to us for the rest of this rebuild. Going into season number three, we are an 86 overall, so we continue to improve and we're projected to finish mid-table in the SEC. I'm not sure if it'll actually happen, but because we can put more points on recruits, I'm definitely going to go after some higher overalls, and Devin Schultz would immediately start for us. I mean, no offense to Hayden Richardson, but he might not even improve this offseason, and I have to advance the week already because I'm so curious if we can land those players, but losing to Colorado State's definitely not a good look, and we have a lead on Gary Teal while also only being behind by almost 600. I think when we have guys visit versus Chattanooga, things are going to get very interesting, and I'm so disappointed we lost our last one, but I want to save the games we can hop into because of SEC play, and this isn't going well. We have got to bounce back versus Ole Miss, and right now they have the number two defense. Things are not looking good for the Commodores, but hopefully I'm able to change our season trajectory, and honestly, Drew Dickey hasn't been that bad, but our offensive line has been rough. We also lost quite a few starters on defense, which is pretty noticeable, and on second and goal, I have a feeling that they're about to reach the end zone because they have too much time. We're going to need a miracle, and I think we're best off if we just throw it up to our star wide receiver who is going to not come down with it. They get the pick, and anytime we've seemed to do something well, Ole Miss has responded 
bounded back. This is going to be caught though. So as time winds down here in the third quarter, I feel like we still have a chance and I'm still getting used to using a pocket passing quarterback in this video. I just threw it straight to them, but they're stuck in the end zone. And the fact that we get the ball back after that means we could actually tie it up. But the Rebels continue to get sack after sack. And I'm hoping this crossing route eventually gets open where we did. Third down now with man-to-man -man coverage out there. Our corner route is going to be reeled in. And it is all on Drew Dickey to get us this two-point conversion where he has missed. I might be frustrated, but it's not over yet. On third and 10, it looks like we could intercept this, and we do. Just like last season, all we need to win this football game is a field goal, and we can definitely make that happen. I am fully confident in our team's abilities, and on third and 10, I'm just going to take the sack. I just tried to run the ball like I normally would, which really hurts us, and we are not going to stick with their tight end so they get the first. I know the Rebels are going to try to run out the clock, but surprisingly, they're passing here, and it seems like they're going to do the same thing again where Parks is able to make the catch. I don't understand this strategy, but the hope is to get them off the field on third and three, and we are going to not make the tackle. That's it. Ole Miss is going to get the win. They'd score a touchdown after that, and we were behind by two possessions, so we're going to lose to our cross-division rivals, and Vanderbilt is starting the year 0-3. Everybody's so quick to forget I just led us to an 8-5 year, and this is the bounce back game that we really need. There's so many players visiting because I know that we should be able to get the right result, and it's not going to lead to a single commit, but as long as we stay in tight battles for these players all season, I cannot complain. These two I really care about though, especially Devin Schultz at quarterback, so I am going to schedule them for Auburn, and despite being 2-3, and three, Alabama's sitting at number 17, but they're probably still going to take us down and they don't. I would have never imagined Vanderbilt beating Alabama in season number three, but I know five of these six next matchups are going to be really tough, and we're starting to fall out of some of these battles where we couldn't even schedule a visit. The problem we ran into though is even though these two players committed, we'd lose out on some other prospects, and that includes both of these 86 overalls. With only 12 targets on our board now, I feel like we have to find some more. And I've noticed that the number two player in the country has fifth interest in our school, and he would come here if there wasn't a deal breaker, which has to do with our athletic facilities. It seems like you can only upgrade this by having success on the field, but that's so dumb because I'm pretty sure in real life Vanderbilt has some really nice facilities. What's big to me though is we have gotten a coach point which allows us to unlock kitchen sink level three, so now I can max out the points on all of these players, and that gives us a much better chance at landing them. We just have to get to the Auburn game. George is the only team standing between us, and they beat us by 25 again. I think the score was the exact same last year, but I don't care. All I'm focused on is taking down the Auburn Tigers. And in order to get a ton of coach points, we need to pass for over 250 yards. This might be the biggest moment in this rebuild, and we're just hoping for the best. All of these fans in the crowd know what's on the line today, and we've gotten them to a fourth and inches where they just handed it off Iran commit. I felt like that was the only thing we could do there. And passing for 250 yards while getting the win shouldn't be too difficult, but we will see what happens as I throw an interception on my first play of the game. That is not a good start. By the second quarter, it is 7-7, to so things are going a little bit better, but I'm gonna fumble it away. And the Auburn defense has been pretty solid. Our touchdown came off of a play where their coverage busted, but outside of that, they keep locking up. And on third and five, it's man-to-man -man coverage, which makes this super simple for us. The pressure is always on whenever they go for it on these third and sixes, but I'm going to pick it up, and it looks like Sani Noah Lola, I don't even know how to say his name, is going to take it to the crib. Our free safety might have just made the play of the game. And they'd score a touchdown on their next drive to stay in it, but I'm not concerned with it because we're going to pick up this third and three, and there's time before half. Drew Dickey already has 158 passing yards, so he really doesn't need that much more. And I don't think that's going to be a hard goal to achieve, especially if we are going to find Brown on this one. There are very key games in every rebuild, and this is definitely one of them where we are going to catch this too. So this has been a fantastic drive to end the second quarter, and I really didn't have much open on this. It's very risky to call one quick play, but I think I'm just going to have to throw it away, and oh my gosh, are you kidding? I don't know what Drew Dickey was thinking, but instead of putting it off to the sideline, he threw it out of the back of the end zone. So we didn't get any points, and he's had to lead us down the field to start this quarter. Now, it seems like he likes to choke inside the red zone, but I'm sure we will eventually come away with some points, and there was no way we were catching that. This is a long third and 17. I don't even want to force anything. I would much rather just take our field goal, but we might not have to. And when you have a running back like we do, we're just going to hand it off to him. All of that work might not mean much, though, because with a minute left in this game, Auburn is driving, and they're only trailing by seven, so it is crucial that we get them off the field on this fourth and ten, and we aren't going to do it. We literally had two zones that could have guarded that, and all I can think about is the visiting quarterback watching us choke our lead against the Tigers. If we don't land him, I feel like the outlook for our program is going to be pretty grim. It's our best chance at getting a high overall recruit in this dynasty, and here on second and eight, I'm going to have to guard their flat where they throw it away. This all comes back to if we had that field goal before the half, it would definitely be over right now, and it is on senior Drew Dickey to lead us down the field with this much time left on the clock.
o'clock, which is not much. I am afraid that we are going to be headed to overtime, but there's still a chance we aren't. And my hope is they don't guard our running back where the wheel route's open and we're only getting a few. I don't know why he'd fall down in bounds, but the pressure is certainly on and we're going to take the quick slant. That bad throw is going to come back to bite us though and their man-to-man -man coverage just locked up. So Lee's going to get the pick. I was hoping that route would create some separation and I think I just blew the game. There's only this much time left and he's going to take it all the way there. I'm not going to lie. I am sick to my stomach and I tried to force it just to avoid overtime. I don't know how we bounce back from this and we might have still gotten some decent points out of that, but we could have had so many more on these prospects and why are we still locked out on Wyatt Meeks? Our stadium atmosphere cannot be that bad and there's so many things about this program holding us back. I know we somehow upset South Carolina last year, but my expectations are that is not going to happen again and it does. Clearly, we perform 10 times better whenever we just sin. So that's what we're going to do against Florida as well and we only lost by three. Therefore, I'm relieved that we're the same overall as Kentucky and I'm checking these recruits every week to see if we can finally beat out the Gators for both of these guys. When I say this is the worst recruiting class I've put together, I mean it because we're still in battles for so many different players. And even if we land all of them, that's only going to give us 12 prospects. We're not going to land them all though, considering Wisconsin's stolen this defensive end. And I'd love to beat our rivals, Tennessee. But right now, I feel like we have a better chance at winning this game if we just sim it. And that's not the case. Maybe I was wrong about that, but Wyatt Meeks finally got over the stadium atmosphere because after a full season of it being a deal breaker, he just signed with us. And both of these guys are going to come down to the wire. So I don't know what to expect. Right now, they're on a visit at Florida. And if that goes well, they might commit there. But they didn't. And for whatever reason, they just dropped out of the race on Devin Schultz. We are about to lose 19 seniors after this year. And to replace them going into the off season, we only have five commits. But I'm so happy because I think we're going to get the guy that we really need. And shout out to quarterback Drew Dickey for filling in for a season. He wasn't great. So Cedric Alexander definitely struggled. But for the third year in a row, Junior Sherrill went over a thousand receiving yards. And I'm not even worried that we took a major step back. I think the right quarterback can change everything. And it's nuts with all the talent that we're losing, only one player's going on to the NFL. We produced a third round pick, but that's it. And there's no way Florida thinks we're accepting this 45 overall transfer. Now, what I'm about to do could come back to bite me, but I'm willing to take a major risk to try and get both of these guys. I don't know why I did that, but I see two yellow names. And this is the smallest recruiting class of all time with seven players, but they carry their weight because this was ranked inside the top 100. Gary Teal is about to tear it up on the defensive line for us. And our quarterback room is small, but with the addition of Devin Schultz, I've completed the second challenge in the video signing an 88 plus recruit. That is nuts and things could continue to just get better because our player progression is in and I think this is the best team that we've ever put together. We've only got 56 players on the roster, but we're going to make it work. And it's also important to remember that recruiting is so much easier now. I think from here on out, we should go from running the one back offense to switching over to the air raid. And we're definitely only going to have Devin Schultz for three seasons. So with that in mind, anybody that's a junior, I'm going to red shirt. I don't know exactly how I feel about it, but three years from now could be our championship window. And this season doesn't start too difficult, but as the year goes on, it gets super hard. After what happened to us last season, we're honestly not supposed to be that good. But as an 88 overall team, I think we'll end up doing decent. And I have got to put together a decent recruiting class because we don't have that many players. Now, it's definitely going to be a challenge to land a lot of these prospects, but one I think we're going to have a good shot at is DJ Ferguson. And I can't believe we're his number one school right now. That would be a major help to our defense. And I don't know what happened to Memphis, but they fell off as a team so hard that we destroyed them. I have faith that we could do the same thing to Ole Miss. So I'm just going to go ahead and sim it, hope for the best, and we lost by three. Considering how well Schultz played, that hurts. But our defense let us down, and I'm ready to just advance to our Alabama game. I think either that or the Florida matchup would be great for visit week, but I'm going to select the game against the Gators. And the reason for that is the Crimson Tide have started the season one and four, so it wouldn't be a quality win if we took them down, and we are able to. Going into the game against the Gators, though, they are favored, so I'm offended because on paper we're better, and we have a better record with the sixth best offense in the country. Our freshman quarterback's been fantastic as he has two good wide receivers to throw to, and I'm excited to use him for the first time. I told you all I was going to find a pocket passer for a rebuild, and here on our first drive, I'm going to stare down that crossing route, throw it over there, and we are going to reel it in. Devin Schultz is just dotting up every defense he faces this season, and that's no different today, but I am wondering how our defense is going to hold up, and we almost got over to the screenplay. Since they're out of field goal range, they're going for it on fourth and six, and they are throwing it straight to our DBs. That's knocked away, and this is one of the best starts that we've been able to get off to so far. Fresh running back Maurice Wakefield brought that one in and now we're going to have the corner route which should take us inside the five so we just need a little bit more and we eventually have got to beat that coverage. Shamarius Harris has actually been solid and from the looks of it it's just going to continue to get worse for the Gators. I mean we wouldn't catch that one but we are going to reach the end zone again and they still haven't scored a point we are about to get a sack on them and no way they almost got
just got the first. Well, I guess they have no choice but to go for it on fourth and one, and that was good blocking. So it's no surprise that Woodley do a touchdown, but they just can't keep up. And Devin Schultz just set himself a school record. We know this isn't how Richardson expected to be out there on the field, but he is getting minutes now as a backup. And rightfully so, because Devin Schultz had an insane stat line. It wouldn't lead to too many commits, but we did get Ricky Sales and DJ Ferguson, who's not only 6'5", but he also has 97 speed. He's the best safety I've ever recruited, and we have a decent chance at getting some of these other prospects now. So of course it's off the table that I'll be fired at this point. And what we should start focusing on is what our chances are of winning the SEC championship. If South Carolina and Tennessee are the best two teams, we have to save the games that we hop into. But that also means I have no control over what happens at Georgia, and we just smoked them. I think our air raid offense has really opened things up, and it took a bit, but we have finally made it into the top 25. With Auburn being 2-5, and five, we should take them down to go into the South Carolina game, and that's not a question. So I would have never expected our team to be this good, but it is, and this matchup against the Gamecocks is such a big deal. We always beat them in sim, but I feel like I'd be stupid to not hop into it. And I'm really thinking about it because four of our last five matchups are against ranked schools. So you know what? I think we're just going to let the computer decide what happens here, and that was not the right decision. I mean, it worked for us in our last two seasons, but now that we're actually good, it did not pay off, and that's going to make it really hard to sneak into the SEC championship. I should have just played it, but I think making the playoffs is more important. So as long as Sim goes well for us against Kentucky, we will still be in the running for that. And it's surprising to me that Devin Schultz isn't in the running for the Heisman. As a freshman, he's thrown for 34 touchdowns with only four interceptions, and it's time to see if we can take down Tennessee, but it's definitely going to be difficult, especially since we have to travel to play them on the road. Our first drive is going pretty well, and we are going to miss that pass. And since he's a freshman, I'm not sure what any of these buttons are before the play, but we could make the read late, which is why it's probably best to just give it to our freshman redshirted running back, and he has so much space. Maurice Wakefield is going to put us up by seven, but how our defense does is going to decide the outcome of this game, and we've already gotten them to a fourth and one, where they think it's the right move to be aggressive, but it wasn't. We just got a huge stop, and they're going with man-to-man -man coverage, so we can dot that up to Tristan Brown, but now they have us on a third and 12, and I'm going to take the C route, which worked out. However, the refs are trying to take it away, and this was obviously a catch, so even though they tried, they're not going to prevent us from scoring. Devin Schultz also sets another school record, and approaching halftime, we're still up by two possessions, but I'm looking to make it a 17-point game here, and the only issue is time is definitely not on our side, so we got to get it out. We could settle for three, but I really want to reach the end zone, and we forced it straight to Tennessee just to do that. So I was afraid that could be the start of us collapsing, but it just hasn't been the case. Although there have been some rough offensive plays from us, we're still scoring at a pretty efficient rate, and on this third and 20, I highly doubt we're going to convert. Because there are rivals, though, we are going to hit them with the fake field goal, and Hayden Richardson let us down. We could have gone up by 17, but it's all good. This play will not get them the first, and we continue to stop the volunteers. As time winds down in this one, it is still 27 to 17, and we are going to fall short. But Devin Schultz has still set a school passing yard record, and I'm hoping we can just move the chains here, which we were able to do. Tennessee is going to fall to us again, and that's exciting because we could still make the SEC championship. But more importantly, I like our odds of making the playoffs. And if our freshman quarterback could get that experience, it would be massive. We're moving up to number 16 in the country, but I think the loss to South Carolina is going to hold us back. And the only way it wouldn't is if Auburn beat them in this game, but they were not able to. Now we just have to beat Stanford and Texas. And I was not expecting us to turn things around this quickly, but making the playoffs is only a couple of games away. We've already gotten one touchdown in this one, and on third and 20, we are going to take the sack. So it has been a defensive matchup, and that's why I'm expecting our defense to stop them on this third and six where we do. Freshman Gary Teal got in for the sack, and on a third and long, it looks like they're running with some zone coverage that we are going to dot up. I'm also expecting one of our outside wide receivers to break the press, and we're just throwing up the 50-50 ball, but they're saying he didn't get a foot in, and I think we should just challenge it. Best case scenario, he actually made the catch, and it looks like he did get that left foot down, but I don't know if they're going to give it to us. It all depends how the ref is feeling today, and they reversed the play, so that was a great challenge. It is rare for those to work, but we have also forced a fumble, and we're going to reach the end zone again, so going into the half, we should be up by three possessions, and this result is going to prove that we deserve to be a playoff team, in my opinion. I have no idea what happened there, but it's why we normally pass it, and it keeps getting worse for Stanford, where we are going to make it 35-3. In the end, we blew out another ranked opponent, and Devin Schultz played amazing, but our backups also did well to make the score look like this. As for our progress in recruiting, we're unfortunately trailing on all three of these prospects, but I think those battles are going to be taken to the offseason, and please tell me that we're going to beat Texas, we do. However, I'm noticing that Devin Schultz did not play in that one, and I'm just relieved to see that he's not on the injury report long term. It might prevent him from becoming a 4,000-yard passer this year, though,
though, and we just have to hope that a couple of these teams lose during conference championship week. We didn't make it because I stupidly decided to sim the South Carolina game, and there are some teams ahead of us like LSU, but we'll see what happens here, and they get the win. West Virginia is another team that could drop below us, and it seems like they're not going to, and I highly doubt Miami would drop that far even if they lost to Clemson, but it's not going to matter. I figured as a 10-2 and SEC school, we would get in since Georgia and Arkansas both did, but our ranking according to the game was not higher than either of those schools, and I'm sure Devin Brown deserved to win the Heisman, but our quarterback should have been in the race. Just for comparison, these are the stats that he put up, and then Devin Schultz had 43 touchdowns with more passing yards, so he got snubbed and we definitely did not run the ball that much. Because of our passing attack though, we made sure that Joseph McVay's draft stock went through the roof, and let's just get our bowl game out of the way. There's no way Southern Miss stops the number one offense, so we should cruise to an easy win, and it said we were in the Cheez-It Bowl, but now it's saying the Citrus one. Either way, what's important to me is we get the right result and Devin Schultz has 4,000 passing yards, so that's going to be our two goals in this game, and he's coming very close. As the half goes on, he continues to rack them up, and this is going to take us inside the five-yard line, while also just putting him over 4,000 passing yards this year. Just off of how well we've played, I think we're going to take another step forward in the following season, and we couldn't thread the needle there, but we've still already scored 31, so there's no way that Southern Miss beats us, and if I showed you all our stats from this game, you all would not believe them. It is halftime, and Devin Schultz has thrown for 405 passing yards, and obviously we'd go on to get the win, but more importantly, Devin Schultz put up even better numbers, and I think this is the most yards I've ever seen in a rebuild. Due to that performance, he's going to take Pavia's school record, and that also means we've now knocked off half the challenges in this video. I've even gotten a contract extension at Vanderbilt, but I'm a little worried we're going to take a step back, losing two of our best wide receivers, and I'm just thankful that we are keeping around our strong safety. I should probably focus in on bringing in some more receivers this season, but before then, we have the offseason period coming up, and we have gotten a new offensive coordinator, which is going to help us out tremendously. With only two players on the board, we're just going to split our points down the middle, and that's going to get us both of them. So you can see we went after quality this year as we have a top 10 class with only 12 signees. The overalls really aren't that much different than one of our previous ones, but I do love having Alex Johnson and DJ Ferguson, and I'm excited to put these athletes in different positions. I didn't think D'Angelo Gardner would be an 88 overall quarterback, but I said I wouldn't use a scrambler, so we made him a wide receiver because we also already have our answer at QB, and these other guys probably aren't going to see the field too much for us no matter where I put them. One thing that's very clear to me is we have got to recruit some new receiving targets because our tight ends are also going to graduate, but outside of that, our future looks really promising, and I'm kind of surprised that Devin Schultz only went up by one overall. I mean, he really doesn't need to improve much. He threw for 48 touchdowns, and his stats look incredible, but the throw accuracy could use a boost, and I'm so excited for this season. Going into it, we're a 93 overall, but we're still projected to finish fourth in our division in the SEC, so it could be a challenge to fight our way into a playoff spot, and I'm just happy to see Devin Schultz getting the recognition he deserves. As of now, he is projected to be the Heisman winner in his first game. He gets us 51 points, and when I go over to recruiting, you're going to see that there are a ton of red positions, but I think it'll be okay because I found a lot of good prospects, including these three wide receivers, these two defensive ends, and then this 87 overall tackle. Because we're now a higher overall than most of our opponents as well, I am expecting us to blow out a lot of opponents this year, and that's another great win. Devin Schultz literally threw for six touchdowns, and I thought it would make these wide receivers want to play for him, but we are struggling to pick up this tight end. It is what it is, though. I've already decided that our visit week is going to be against number 12 Georgia, and I was going to recruit this punter until he became a 13 overall. It is a little shocking how low some of the overalls of these SEC schools are, but that just makes me even more confident to sim all the way to the Georgia game, and we blew out Missouri too. I should probably pause our sim, though, before we play at Bama, because even though they haven't had good seasons recently, they are undefeated, and I almost just skipped right over this game. Now, from the looks of it, you wouldn't think that our recruiting was going bad because we're in close battles or have some big leads, but we just lost these two tight ends, which is going to really hurt us, because both of the current ones we have are seniors, and I scouted a lot at this position, especially for the ones interested in us, but they all turned out to be some massive busts. I don't know what to do about it, but we have the number one offense and defense, so I guess we could win it all this season, but I want to prepare in case something goes wrong or we have a bunch of injuries. We're already dealing with two of our offensive players being out, and on third and six, it looks like their man-to-man -man coverage is going to stick as we had no one open. I trust our defense to hold it down, though, and I've sent in a blitz on third and seven, so we're going to get the ball back after forcing three and out, and Devin Schultz is having no issues getting us down the field for this drive. They're even saying that this was a touchdown as he sets a record, and with four minutes left in the second quarter, we should drill this field goal, so my next goal is going to be to maintain the lead that we already have, and on third down, we just force them to throw it away. I'll be very interested to see what they draw up here, and they've stiff-armed us, but they are not going to reach the marker. So now we have it again, and that man-to-man -man coverage means we could be able to beat them deep this
this ball is going to be caught with an aggressive catch. I don't think we should have come down with that. But Bailey found a way to bring it in anyway, and with the bubble screen, we get nothing. Maybe a halfback toss will work a little bit better, and some of those blocks are incredible. So Maurice Wakeford's going to make it 24-7, to and I was not expecting us to be this good this season, but we are dominating against Alabama. That's a user pick from Kirk. He's going to break a tackle, and I remember recruiting Jay Kirk as a freshman. I think he's a junior now, and we're going to take our curl route, which is going to get us down to the one. So Devin Schultz had an amazing first half, and I thought there was no way that Alabama could come back from that, but now I'm not as sure. They're only trailing by 10 with a minute remaining, and they're going to break that tackle and another. So they're closing in on getting it within three, and if they got an onside kick, we would be in a ton of trouble. That sack's going to really help us out, though. And on third and goal, I'm going to try to get in with Curtis, but they've gotten it to the two. Here we go. It is fourth down now, and we just can't stick with everyone. So they are doing the onside kick, and we have recovered it. We are going to eventually hold on. I figured we had built up too big of a lead to blow, but Devin Schultz didn't have a good third and fourth quarter. And we still have a long season ahead of us, but at least we're undefeated. If we're able to win out, we've guaranteed ourselves a spot in the conference championship, but I no longer see our quarterback up here in the Heisman race. So we better show out versus North Texas, and that is what I'm assuming he did. During that time, we were able to land 87 overall Ryan Allen, and one of the best tight ends I could find to go after was this 72 overall, but that's still a battle, and so is it for a lot of these other players. That's why it's crucial that we beat the Bulldogs, and we should since we still have the number one offense, but we also need to make sure we complete these goals, and passing for 250 yards isn't an issue. I feel like our stadium's been full like this for years now, but we've just recently started to be good, and what was that? It was a weird play call, but it's going to make it third and four where nobody's been able to get a stop yet, and I just didn't use her well enough. Defense has been non-existent, and on this third and two, the motion worked wonders, so that would lead to a touchdown, but Georgia's trying to end the first half by getting one of their own, and there's just 12 seconds left, so all we have to do is make sure they don't get close enough, and thank Thankfully, we were successful in that regard. With a few seconds left in the half, we might as well just try to throw it up, and Shamarius Harris is wide open. He has created separation, but he is not quick enough. So it's going to be 21 to 17. And guess who's going to be the first team to get points in this second half? Hopefully us. I just got to make sure we're able to reach the end zone. I don't even know what I was throwing there. But it's probably best to just hand it off instead. And the pressure is definitely on here, where they just went with the halfback draw, but they still converted. But they fumble as well, and I didn't think we were going to get that. Now, the refs are reviewing it, and it seemed like it came really late. He could have been down, so who knows what the refs are going to say here, and they wanted to keep Georgia in the game. That could have been huge for us, but instead we're just hoping to get a lucky stop, and they are throwing it straight to Smith. He's going to get the interception, and we cannot return it. I'm not too worried, though. That was great defense, and I feel like we're capable of putting together a 95-yard drive down the field as long as we can get out of the zone of taking a safety. Our running back fought hard for the first down there, and Devin Schultz has been shredding this defense, so we are really close to reaching the end zone now as Browns goes down at the two. This is where we hand it off to Maurice Wakefield, and we've set him up for multiple touchdowns in this game. In the end, we'd win by a little bit more than I was expecting us to, and I wouldn't be surprised if we became a top three team. We've gotten a lot of really good results, and look at that, in the college football poll, we are up to number three. In order to miss out on the SEC championship now, we'd have to lose multiple division games, but I don't know if we're going to have a Heisman finalist because it's all halfbacks up here. Devin Schultz literally leads the country in passing yards, while also having 24 touchdowns in just six games, but he started to turn it over more, and with the win against Georgia, these three players that visited committed. We have an answer at tight end, but he is only 5'11", and this could be delusional, but I'm confident enough in this team to sim all the way to the Florida game because I think that's the last one I'm going to hop into. I made the mistake not playing against the Gamecocks last year, but they don't seem to be as good, and even Florida's only an 88 overall. Even if they somehow took us down, I think we've locked our spot into the SEC championship, and of these last four games, Stanford seems to be the hardest. We haven't really moved anywhere in the polls, but that's because LSU's been pretty solid. And finally, Devin Schultz has appeared at the bottom of the Heisman watch. Since we could actually win it all this season, I wish I focused a little bit more on the game management coach tree, because even if I land all five of these players, there's a chance that I never get to actually play with them. And I think we're going to simulate every game until we take on Stanford later on. I mean, Devin Schultz is literally just steamrolling defenses. And that's why I said it was so crucial that we landed him. We're just going to get through these two so we can wrap up the rest of the regular season and Tennessee beat us. All of a sudden, if we drop a game, we could miss out on the college football playoffs. And of course, our rivals in this Vanderbilt rebuild were able to take us down. During that time period, I see that Devin Schultz has become the Heisman favorite, but apparently I should have played the Tennessee game instead of this one, and we still have the number one offense in the country. It'll be very interesting to see how this season finishes out, because I think we could win a championship, but I could also see us getting eliminated in the first round. Depending how we do against Stanford, it should give us a decent idea of how we stack up against out-of-conference teams. And this has been no different than an SEC game as we score again. I don't think the SEC's having a down year. I think we're just that good.
good. And we've gotten another defensive stop. Before halftime, we're actually looking to make this one 28 to zero and we broke a tackle. But going down after that actually made sense because we were able to run more time off of the clock. And what a half from Devin Schultz. This one was never a contest as Richardson got to finish out the fourth quarter. And if we're not playing SEC schools, we might cruise through the playoffs. I know Stanford wasn't the highest ranked team, but they still had a decent record in the ACC. And if we won a first round by in the playoffs, we have to beat LSU in the conference championship. That alongside the Heisman Trophy is on the line in this next matchup. And these four recruiting battles are on to the off season. But like I said, we might not ever need to play with these guys. It'll all depend on how this postseason goes. And I can't wait to show you all Devin Schultz season stats. Just know in this game, we're going for over 5,000 passing yards. And I might need to recruit a pocket passing quarterback more often because we've done so well throughout Sim. I had no idea he was going to be this good. I thought it would be a while before we went for a championship, but I think we're only in season five. And to rebuild Vanderbilt this soon is honestly kind of nuts, but Davis read him like a book. And if we don't catch him, he's going to be gone. I have not started this game in the right of ways and we are going to make it. I'm the reason that Devin Schultz just turned it over, but I could also be the reason that they only get a field goal and their running back cannot make it all the way. Surely we'll bring him down. I'd like to think that even if we lost this game, we would make the playoffs. But after getting snubbed last year, we cannot risk it. By the time the second quarter has rolled around, we've actually gotten a one point lead. But that's more so because of our defense than our offense. And I felt like we had to go for it on fourth and two. It ended up working out. And I think our C route should get open, but we're going to have to adjust with him. And wide receiver Tristan Brown has been playing incredibly. His season stats are also really good and Wakefield won't get in. So we're going to switch it up, throw the ball here. And that was lockdown coverage. It wouldn't matter as Devin Schultz broke his own record, but for some reason, the refs are trying to take it away, and I could not tell you what they're looking for here. Tristan Brown held on to the football. They think he might have secured it using the ground, though, so it's a good thing the play stands. And on the third and seven here near the end of the first half, this could be big if we got the stop, but they're saying he reached over the marker. It is all good, though. Just a few plays later, it is another third and long, and we should make the hit with one of these guys, and that's when I'm also going to call a timeout. I knew that with a minute and a half left on the clock, Devin Schultz could lead us down the field against them, so we have got to put up some more points and we're going to see if this works out. Bailey is not going to catch it. I couldn't tell if that other guy was in a deep zone or not, but for a second, it looked like he wasn't. And with more man-to-man -man coverage, they are actually going to stick with our tight end. Smalls gets the interception and that is our second one of this game. Devin Schultz has been a little underwhelming, but we would open up the third quarter with a touchdown and then our defense got a massive interception. So we're on pace to get a three possession lead versus the Tigers and Tristan Brown created enough separation. They got a pick on something similar in the first half, but I had to risk it again. And this is the first time I'm trying to evade the pocket but that's why I recruited a pocket passer because I wanted to be forced to throw it so I'm glad they got the sack and there's a laser. However, it was not held on to. So now we need this third and goal to go well and we have our slant wide open. Then because of another turnover, we have the ball on the six yard line where that's another tutty. So our defense has definitely been the reason we're on top, but that's perfectly fine with me and I've been wondering something. How was LSU ranked number three in the country? I mean, we played terrible with two turnovers and we still beat the Tigers by 25. So I feel like they were just massively overrated or maybe we're just one of the best teams in the country. It was about time that we won an SEC championship and we might not have had a Heisman winner, but we did have a Heisman finalist. So that means the only challenge I've left is win a national championship. And we even had defensive players winning some awards. It was senior strong safety Dante Carter, who I decided to redshirt during this rebuild. And that paid off for us because we had Devin Schultz, who just had an incredible season. So I can ignore those 13 interceptions and our rushing totals weren't impressive, but receiving wise, this definitely is. And Tristan Brown should have won the Blitnikoff. Now it's time for our first playoff appearance in school history, and I would have never imagined to see Rutgers here, but there's a chance we play them in the quarterfinals, and it would have been sweet if it happened, but instead they got blown out by USC. So that leaves me a little worried because they look super solid, and on paper, their four overalls better than us. That worried me a little bit until I saw that they lost to Stanford, and with that in mind, I'm feeling a lot more confident, but we still need to make sure that we get off to a good start. And on our first drive, Devin Schultz is going to help us find the end zone. Shamarius Harris was the one that was able to get us there, and it looks like USC is going to go with the halfback screen, but we're going to get all over it with Carter. They had no chance of picking that up and things are going really well, but we're faced with a third and long that's held on to. So I was a little worried about how that would go, but it worked out for us. And on the run, I couldn't make the pass. That's what happens when you recruit a pocket passer. You have to actually stay in the pocket, but I feel like it's worked out for us because he's had an incredible two years. And ideally it would be nice if we didn't get held to just a field goal here as Edwards catches it. He's actually made for an amazing tight end, but USC responded back pretty quick. So we're going to have to do the same which we do. It's so obvious that this one's going to be an offensive shootout, but we got off to such a good start, which really helps. And this run gets them like seven on third and five. They just went with it again. That's three in a row, but that's going to leave them short of the marker and they refuse to go for a field goal. So now they're just going to go with a quarterback run that we stop. We might be able to score some even more points 
if we can get out of the danger zone of taking a safety, but that throw was off the marks, and that is so unfortunate. Now we have to somehow hold the Trojans again down here on the goal line, and they have way too much time back there. Devin Schultz is making up for it as he's led us down the field pretty quickly, and now he's going to find Brown, but I still would have loved if we didn't turn it over on the last drive, and I'm not happy that they've gotten it all the way down the field on us, but I think they've messed up with their clock management, and they're not even going to get a field goal. They could have had it within 11 points, but instead, it's still 14, and on third and seven, we almost picked it. It would have been nice to get the turnover there, but as long as our offense keeps cruising, it really won't matter anyway, and Schultz is going to have to find a receiver here, which he does. That means on our next drive, he's looking to set an NCAA record, and he does, as he's now passed for 59 touchdowns in a season, and he's about to get 60. Nobody has put up stats before like he's doing right now, and with that throw, he's set another record. USC tried their best, but they couldn't keep up, and we are moving on to the semifinals, where we're getting either Notre Dame or Penn State. I would much rather play the 11 seed, but I'm afraid that that's not going to happen because their offense has been almost unstoppable. And on the other side of the bracket, Bowling Green beat Alabama. They're the only undefeated team left in this thing, and if we could make the championship, I'd love to play them, but we have to get past Notre Dame first. The Fighting Irish have the number two defense in the country, but it hasn't seemed like it so far. And even though this game started less than a minute ago, we're about to score. I love passing it, but we're probably better off giving it to Maurice. And on third and one, I plan on sending a little blitz, but they picked it up pretty well. I'm afraid that no matter what we do, they're about to reach the end zone, and they're so close to making it happen as they faked us out. They would even get us to a fourth and four, but I'm gonna go for it anyway. I felt like we could pick it up. And Devin Schultz has to have set another record as this is the most passing yards in a season. At this rate, he's the greatest quarterback in college football history. And if his defense couldn't get him a championship, that would be really embarrassing, but we get the stop. And we continue to fly down the field where we should be able to dot up these zones, and that was off the marks. Every so often, he doesn't hit his target, but that was a hard pass to make. And I don't love it already being third and 10, but I'm sure we can still convert, and there's Brown coming away with the football. He now has the most receiving yards in college football history, and it's starting to hit me how crazy of a rebuild this has been. I never end up breaking all the records that we've been able to in this video, and hopefully this time the run actually works. As this game goes on, Notre Dame seems to be falling farther and farther behind, but they pick up the third down, and they actually didn't. The refs cheated them. It wasn't ruled a catch on the field, but then they challenged it, and I think they're going to reverse it because it seemed like he might have gotten a foot in, but who knows? This is a game-changing call, and of course, course they reversed it. With a new set of downs, Notre Dame's gonna pass it on third down and we were all over it. So we're getting the ball back again. And of course, you know that we're gonna have to try and get points in the last two minutes of the half. Let's just let this one go into the end zone. It's already been a really good game for Schultz, but it would be even better if he put up another touchdown. And why is our tight end wide open? We're gonna see that all day. Here is one of my favorite plays in the game and the wheel route is going to be caught, but they're saying he didn't get a foot in and it was pretty obvious that he didn't. So we will take our three. Our mascot's still super excited about it. And we We've done a pretty good job of maintaining our lead, but they're attempting a last second comeback. So with two minutes left, I'm hoping that we can hold on and that's going to be the case as we recover the onside kick. We are headed to the national championship game now and Devin Schultz needs to finish off his season, but it would be a lot easier to do it versus Bowling Green than Georgia. And I know we could beat the Bulldogs, but I'm rooting to play the Falcons. And I didn't think it could actually happen, but if they don't pick up this fourth and three, they're in a lot of trouble. And why would they send it deep? Now Georgia has to somehow stop Bowling Green and they couldn't, so they're headed to the championship. We have gotten exactly what we were hoping for, and the difference in overall makes me so happy. It doesn't matter to me that they're undefeated because their only player above an 83 overall is a kicker, and we should have no issues winning at all. It was a lot quicker of a rebuild with Vanderbilt than I thought it would be, and somehow we are faced with a third and 33 on this first drive, so maybe they could compete with us, but we catch it, and that was our running back that would come down with it. We'd obviously score a touchdown and then get a couple more down the half, so to have a chance in this, the Falcons are going to have to try a little bit harder, and we stop them again while also taking a timeout. So I'm being fully disrespectful, trying to get even more points before the half. And if we have a decent return, we might be able to. Jackal is going to have to get around these guys. And I don't know if that's field goal range. It might be worth attempting just because we can. And it is going to be short. And they're also going to have a chance to return this. So maybe that was the wrong decision. We're still going to be up 21 to 3 against Bowling Green. And I'm expecting us to cruise through the second half, which is why it's no surprise that we are. And I want to see our season stats. I feel like we've set so many records. So after this game, we're going to revisit them. And it was was obviously never close. It took over 100 years for Vanderbilt to do it again, but they found somebody that could bring them a national championship. And here's the celebration that we have been waiting for. Now let's check out our season stats. 6,500 total passing yards with 67 touchdowns for Devin Schultz. And I've never seen four 1,000 yard receivers before with Tristan Brown's career going from 63 receiving yards to 2,242. That ended up being one of the shorter rebuilds that I've done with a worse school recently, but we were able to set three NCAA records between our our quarterback and wide receiver. And then when it comes to the score,
school thing, every single passing one was broken by Devin Schultz while receiving wise, we had multiple different players. I also think it's kind of funny that those two studs decided they didn't want to go on to the NFL. One of them couldn't even. And that wraps up this rebuild, but make sure to let me know down below which school you want to see me fix next, and I'll see you all then.